Welcome back. You got Danita with Booty Bands More Than Fitness Podcast. And today we have an amazing topic about how to really change your simple daily chores into powerful daily actions. It's going to really supercharge your life. Welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness Podcast. Get your best booty and abs in 30 days with your own coach and home gym. Results or your money back. Studies show that 80% of women gain the weight back within 12 months, and this is because the weight loss industry is just focusing on that one-size-fits-all solution rather than something that's more specific for just you. So not anymore because up here at BootyBands.com, you're going to get your own coach, a women's home gym, and the highest quality nutrition that's going to create those lasting results. So let's get started. I've got a mill pro here, and I'm excited to see what her expertise can really help us with our daily nutrition. She's going to give us a three-step process on how she can really make this simple for us. And I think that was my most favorite thing about her is that she makes everything so simple. So let's go ahead and welcome Jill Treat to the podcast. Thanks, Jill, for being here. Hey, guys. How are you? How's everybody out there? That's awesome. Hey, Jill is actually an owner and founder of Treat Yourself Simple, where she is considered the meal pro, where she actually will make your meal plan and program it specific to you to really keep your life simple. So Jill, how did you get started with this and why are, are I can tell you're so passionate about it. Where's your passion from this? Where'd it come from? I love, I, well, I honestly, I love this. This is my passion, um, but it started way back. Um, I have two kids and way back, my son was dealing with, we'd go through a cycle where it would go from cold bronchitis, bronchitis, pneumonia, and the cycle would continue to happen over and over again. And so what happened was he continued being put on steroids. Well, I was like, okay, great, but there's a lot of bad things that come with the steroids um, from that. And so I started looking into some different alternatives and different actions about how I could help to make it so that he wasn't having all this. Well, what it came down to was that he actually had sensitivities to different things in food. So um, if I, as a mom, could change what he was eating to help him feel better and have a better day at school with his friends and playing all of his sports and things, I was going to do that because there was no way that I was going to just keep filling in full of medicines that didn't help him get over all of this. So from that, I actually started doing um, freezer friendly dinners um, using a service. And I loved the service so much that I actually opened up my own brick and mortar, um, which due to a divorce and kids graduating from um, high school at that time, um, you have to pick and choose what is has to go. And so that was one of the things that had to go for me while I restructured my life again. And so my recipes, they keep following me everywhere that I go. And literally like my box of recipes just kept following me. And then my um, hair salon actually is uh, my old business, my old brick and mortar business. And so when I go in and get my hair done, we talk about it all the time. And so it was like all these signs kept leading me back towards the business. And so I changed it up a little bit into what needed to work for today. And that's where the virtual online, you know, um, consulting part of the business came into play. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. It's always interesting to see how people end up into their passion. And usually there's some sort of hardship in there, as uh, as you mentioned there, that eventually brings them back into where they need to be. So thank you for sharing that. Um, If you could really tell us like, what's the um, one thing that you do it most, like what's the outcome that you work so hard for? What is that? You know, I, I work... When you come in from work, a lot of times um, women have a lot of things pulling at them, whether they're together with somebody or they're not. You've got to make sure the house is clean. You've got to pay the bills. You've got to, you know what I mean? Do all the everyday chores and food shouldn't be a chore to you, but we look at it as a chore. And so what happens is, is we put food down at the bottom of the list that we don't need to take care of it right then. And so it ends up being grabbing a a spoonful of peanut butter or just grabbing something on the way home from work or whatever that is. And what we need to do is actually, if you're able to put a plan into place, and I call it a flexible plan because life changes all the time. And so if you're able to put that plan into place, you're able to be a little bit more prepared with ingredients at your house so you can grab something and throw it together. 
Yeah. Thank you for that. I know that the audience is just going to be loving this topic because I have such a really great connection with our community where we do have our one-on-one -on -one conversations with each other. And I really know their pain points. And one of them is this topic you're talking about, mm -hmm. how to really make it so that uh, eating is not this chore. And it, and it is for a lot of people, especially when we think of healthy eating, it just seems so exhausting and it's just so hard. It's difficult, especially when you have kids, it's just so much easier to eat like your kids and, and just to, um, when you're running around and you're grabbing things like the chips or the cookie or, you know, just those unhealthy items, it's just more simple, but really, obviously it becomes a lot harder than we think when we're gaining the weight, our low energy. I mean, we really realize it's actually more difficult and it's not really as simple as, as it, as it does in the outcome. So I'm, I'm grateful for you to be here today and you're giving us what's called a three-step process. And I want to go ahead and go into that. So Ladies, if you're listening, please grab your pen and paper. I think we're going to get a lot of great value of what Jill is telling us today. So step number one, Jill, tell us what that is. Well, um, I think the, the step number one is really taking inventory, but let me back up just a little bit because to get to, into this three-step process, I think it's a lot about mindset. So you have to get your mind in the, into the position that you want to make a difference. You want to make a change in your life and you're tired of what I call a different definition of insanity, which is doing the same thing over and over again and hoping that things are going to change. And so that is really insanity. And so it's like, you have to get into that mindset and awareness of what, where you're at in order to be able to take on these three steps. So like you said, the first step, which I'm so excited about is really taking an inventory of what you're eating, what you're having in your home. And this can be something, yes, I know people don't like to track food and things like that. And I'm not saying track calories. I'm not saying track macros or anything like that. But what I'm saying is, is really write down and have an idea of what you're having every day, because you think you remember, but at the end of the week, you can't remember what you had on Monday. And so think about when you're eating that food and you're picking out what that is, what that emotion is that's going with that, those food choices, and actually just kind of jot it down just for a note for yourself. And this is just a challenge for yourself that helps you to kind of get moving with it to begin with. Okay. So inventory of what you're eating every day or inventory that's in the kitchen inventory of what you're well it's a little bit of both because you want to make sure an inventory of what you're eating which is normally in your kitchen or you're running to the store every day to get but you also want to take an inventory of your kitchen so that that's you can actually see what's happening and what kind of foods you have in your fridge so that you can make up foods with the food that's in your house and that also helps you to, to determine that it, what kinds of foods you like, because you look at recipes and, oh, that little, that recipe looks good, but guess what? Life happened, late meeting, kids running here. You wanted to run out with your friends or whatever. And then what happens is, is that extra ingredient that you bought for that specific meal is still sitting there. Do you ever actually use it? So was that meal really put into place that you really wanted it? Does that make sense? Yeah, totally makes sense. Okay. So, um, basically inventory, taking inventory of what you're eating. So like, uh, creating just like a, uh, Sunday through Saturday schedule and just writing down what you're doing. Okay. So like a little journal there. Exactly. Okay. Any yeah. other things on step one or, or is it step two now? It, we're into step two, really, because that's what you have to do. You have to determine where you're at. And now we're de going to determine what we need to do with those lists that we just made. So okay. now. So before we go into step two, then yeah. I'm going to speak in behalf of, um, a lot of my, uh, members and, uh, -huh. uh, what we're finding is they're skipping meals. So let's say there's, I'm just going to give you an example. So my name's Stacy and, um, I'm going to do an inventory check and it looks like I've skipped meals for or my breakfast, probably every single day this last mm -hmm. week. And then, um, I'm seeing that I'm just kind of grabbing things on the go and, and for my lunch, and, um, dinner, it's pretty good. Like I'm, I'm being able to eat with the family. And so that's like my one good meal. Um, yeah. so I'm probably getting maybe about a meal and a snack or maybe meal and two snacks is kind of what I'm getting in. So that's my inventory. Okay. I'm putting that out there All right now. Now, should we go to step two or what's our next step? Yes. So step two now is actually putting the foods that you are eating into different categories. So the three categories that I say to put those into is your proteins 
which can be plant proteins, you know, meat proteins, whatever that protein looks. And just think, um, you also have fruits and vegetables that act as proteins that, that can help there too. So I, I, you know, like spinach and tomatoes and things like that, those have protein in them. Um, even though they're a vegetable, does that make, I'm, I'm hoping that this is ringing out, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a, the rice and beans together makes a complete protein, um, corn and chickpeas make a complete protein. So yeah, things that are just outside of your typical, uh, steak and chicken. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, you want to put it into a protein, then you want to pick out your fruit, your fruits and veggies and kind of put that into another, um, little box or, you know, kind of list that that's what you're going to put. And then you want to put your greens and your starches, um, like your rices, potatoes, pasta, that kind of stuff into the third category. Got it. And then, yep. And then what you're going to do from those is once you've got those divided up, then you could, this we're into step three, which th this is why it's such a simple process because you're really, you're, you're looking at what you are eating, taking an inventory of what you have, and now I'm going to help you to make the meals. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to go down that list and you're going to pick one protein. You're going to pick at least one, if not two from your veggies and your fruits, and then you're going to pick a, a grain. And that gives you a pretty balanced meal without having to do a lot of calculations and make it a difficult situation and make you start to think, oh my gosh, I don't have this, or I don't have that, or I don't know what to make that puts it into pretty much, if you can keep it just pretty plain and simple, that helps you to be able to put those meals together. Got it. Okay. So the reason why I think this obviously can help, well, number one in booty, being in the, um, uh, booty bands and barbells, we focus on putting more protein in each one of the meals. And that's one of the biggest things I'm seeing that women are not doing is that protein is not in every one of their meals. So essentially they're they are starving their lean muscle, which is their, essentially their metabolism and their metabolism is getting slowed down one, one, because we're growing older in age. Right. But yeah. two, because the lack of protein they're putting in their meals. So I like your simple process on step three, where it says one protein, about two of your veggies or fruit, and then three, um, one grain. So one protein, two, three of your veggies and fruit, and then one grain. Okay. So, um, what, what in this realm or, um, okay. So if somebody comes up and they go, oh yeah, I definitely have not had protein in one of my meals. What's, um, what do you see most common that you're helping people with now at this point? Well, I feel like that when that happens, you, you start to become hungry. Then you're like immediately grabbing for those quick things. A lot of times, um, I, I know that I'm low because I'm grabbing salty things and salt grabbing salty things means that you may need more protein. And so I'm seeing myself when I'm grabbing those chips and I'm, you know what I mean? The quick crackers and things like that. Those things are saying, oh my gosh, I've got to slow down and I've got to find a protein, something with protein. I've got to grab one of my little protein balls. I've got, you know what I mean? Because your body is craving that part of it because all you're going to do when you have just the salt and you're not going to add in the protein to it. It's just going to satisfy you for a few minutes and then you're going to be hungry again. And so it's really when you're able to fill yourself up with that protein, it definitely helps to make your meals last. I'm not saying to skip meals because that's really not what we should be doing because our body starts starving itself. And then it starts every time we eat, it stores it as fat. And that's not what we want. We're, we're looking at it being healthy and we want to feel good and we want to have lots of energy. And that's the way that you do it is when you're able to, um, put all of those different things together in your body so that you're like you said, your metabolism works and you're able to burn that. So as fast as you're eating it, you can almost be burning that those, those nutrients because it works together. Um, <laughs> I, I think of a story that I was told right a long time ago, and it's kind of a, a whole, uh, like a house. Like if you think of, of the, like your, your carbs and your, your veggies and your, um, proteins as, as a house. So like you think of the proteins as the roof, well, you have to have the walls and you have to have the windows in order for the roof to be held up. Right. Well, then think of your, your sides. 
that's your carbs. And a lot of people like don't want carbs. They stray away from carbs and things like that, but there's simple carbs and complex carbs. And you need to know, learn what those, that difference is. And that's one of the things that we do in my program is, is that we work through what those differences are. And I'm sure you teach a little bit on it as well, but there's lots of information out there for you. So think of that as the walls of your house. Well, the walls don't get held up if you don't have the roof. So are you seeing how this is all working? And then your windows are your fruits and vegetables. Those kind of tie everything together, but you can't have your windows in your house if you don't have the walls and you don't have the roof. It all kind of works together. And so I just, that story to me makes so much sense because it is, it's just like a house. It's like you're building a house. And so by not having one of those pieces, one of your parts is going to fall apart. Yeah, absolutely. Um, things that, and just on top of that, things that I've heard is your carbs is your protein protector. And so without, you know, having your carbs one, I mean, obviously your energy is going to plummet. And mm -hmm. when your energy plummets, you're not getting your workouts in, right? Everything, like you're saying, like the house starts to fall apart. You can start to see this ripple effect just starts to hit everything. Um, yeah, the protein, a lot of people miss the protein. Now, I think the reason why I'm going to speak on behalf of the members listening here, they say cost and time. So if somebody on here is saying, oh, but it just costs so much money to get that protein in and it's just a lot of time, what would you do or how have you, how have you helped people with those excuses? Or I, we jump into things that are going to work for them. One protein shakes are super easy to be able to add. Um, I add um, protein mix actually to my eggs. Sometimes I add them to my oatmeal. Um, if I need extra protein, because I'm a person that I've been tested and I know how much protein that I need a day. So I'm a high protein person in order to keep my metabolism moving and not be hungry throughout the day and eating like constantly. And so, um, that's just something that's like one of the things is I've added the protein. The other thing that I keep in my freezer all the time is I keep my hemp seeds, my chai seeds, um, you know, um, any of the nuts and things like that, that I can add into different pieces. Those are different ways that I can add that into my meals as well. Yeah. I love that you said the nuts and the seeds, um, just as simple as sprinkling that on, on your oatmeal or on top of your pancakes or on top of your salads, you'll it's, it's, um, it's awesome how much protein intake you can start to build up with just those little simple, uh, add-ons that you can do. Now, like that you said, protein powder, um, protein powder is just something that can be really quick and on the go it is. And for those that are just really struggling with that time. And the one, the, the ones that are saying the, uh, the, t the cost, um, what I would say to yourself is the cost of being unhealthy outweighing the cost of what the protein is. Right. So I think, um, as we really look at what hospital bills and, and not just not taking care of yourself and what diabetes and insulin, like all, all sorts of the madness that's out there with health issues these days, it's, we should be putting cost time and energy in towards our health, because if we do not have our health, what really do we have? It doesn't right. matter if you have, uh, billions of dollars, if you don't have your health, what billions of dollars, what, what is that going to do for you? Right. So it's really important that we put our health as a priority so that we can live the rest of our life, how we are wanting to live it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I, that when you, when you said that it immediately made me think of, <laughs> I hate to say this sick care versus health care. You know what I mean? We want to be proactive. And so, like I said, with the story to begin with, you know, with my son is it's like, if we can help ourselves by just with what we're eating, why would you not want to do that? why would you, why would you not want to be able to be at home and be with your family versus being in a hospital bed and having other people have to wait on you and tell you what you have to do? I don't know. In the U S that's one of the things that I love is that we're able to be free and make our own choices and things like that. And so this is one of those choices that should be top on our list. I mean, just because it makes you feel so good. And not only is it just burning the, the metabolism and, and helping you to, to move, but it also affects you emotionally and mentally. And there's so much stuff in there with that because it, it just, it all works together. It's like, it's all like married together. And so when you start skipping those meals and you're making excuses to not do that, do you make excuses for everything else that you do? I mean, this should be a priority in your life because this is something that you do three times a day. It's like, you know what I mean? Get ahead of it and figure out your plan of what that plan is going to be. Because really, 
the having a plan and being able to be flexible with that plan is going to be way better than not having a plan at all and not knowing how to put those meals together. Yeah, that's true. And I want to make sure that before we leave this podcast, that they feel like they have that plan so that immediately when they jump off this, they feel, okay, I can do this because yes. if they're having that feeling of, oh, now I'm just even more overwhelmed <laughs> and yeah. now they just gave me the biggest lecture of my life. Like, no, that's not what we want, right? This is not a place of lecturing. So let's go ahead and dive into a plan. Let's think about how this can really work. As she mentioned here, she's got the three-step process. Let's go back over that. So first one is really inventory. Inventory on what you ate, maybe that past day, or it could be the past week. Just do an inventory, check in with yourself. Awareness is going to be your first step to change. And then number two is going to be categories, putting them into categories of what your protein is, uh, what your fruits and veggies are, and then what your grains and your starches, essentially your carbs, right? And then the third one is really putting meals together where all three of those are now in, in the same thing without just having uh, a banana. I have a lot of women will be like, well, I had a banana for a snack and I go, that's awesome. But where's your protein? And they go, mm -hmm. oh, immediately they just thought, well, freak a banana or an apple was healthy, but they didn't realize that they were missing that protein aspect. So what I really like about step three is that you're going, okay, make sure that you're having one of each of those at least. And, um, that puts the first just really quick, simple of just putting that in there. Um, we covered cost and time. And um, what what else would you think that if somebody really needs a plan, is there anything that comes up to your mind over here, Jill, that could help? Um, just not to make it hard, not to make it complex. You don't have to um, like take out things out of your diet, but just to eat them in moderation. You know what I mean? If you're going out with your friends at night and you're, you're going out somewhere to eat, Maybe you pick a salad or a grilled chicken rather than, you know, the fried chicken strips or whatever. And those are just suggestions, you know, to help you to make a good, a good choice on that. Again, it's your life. You can have whatever you want, but you know that if you eat many, I call them convenience foods or, you know, uh, things where you're just stopping through, running through, grabbing stuff and bringing it home or whatever, that if you eat those every day in a row, your body is going to say to you without telling you that you're tired, you're sluggish, you're lethargic. And so just remember that, Hey, I want energy. I want to be top at what I'm doing. And I want to have, be really positive about everything. Definitely eating helps to start that way. And so just don't make it a simple, uh, not a simple, but don't make it a complex process, you know, make this a simple process, just like Dan Danita said, you know, grab your protein, grab your fruits and veggies and grab, uh, you know, your starch, throw on your favorite, you know, seasoning. One of my favorites is garlic. I throw garlic on everything. Lemon pepper is a good, another good seasoning that goes on a lot of different things. Salt and pepper, just your salt and pepper. Those are super easy things. And just to, to know that you can start with something small and then you can work your way up. Because the thing is, is if you start doing this and you cook, you know, maybe like three portions and it's just you, you've got those two extra portions left. So guess what? You can bundle those up and you can have them for lunch or you can throw them in your freezer to be able to pull out later. You know, and that's the same thing if, with the family too. Instead of making just the four servings, make eight servings. And then you can put half of a meal in the freezer. And guess what? You've got a meal now already done for the next week. Cause I'm all about like making it easy and making it simple and time consuming because there are a lot of times when we come home from work and we're just like, whoo, that day just wiped me out. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But if all you have to do is warm it up, then you can still get your workout in. You can still watch your favorite TV show. You can still sit, you know, to read your book. You can do whatever it is that you want to do for that evening. So I just like to put out there that it doesn't have to limit what you're eating, but just really making sure that you're getting those things in that you need. And also portion control. Portion control is huge on there. And, and we can go into a whole thing about that, I'm sure. Um, but that is a big thing that I talk about is portion control because it is so important. And really, when you start looking at those portions and measuring out your portions, I know it sounds crazy, but I just wanted to see. And so I started doing that myself. And it's like, whoa, this bowl of cereal, I can get this much, or I can have a huge bowl of broccoli and, you know, enjoy all of that stuff. So you just, you have to make choices that, that work for you. Definitely. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And I think if you're, if you're feeling at all overwhelmed right now on the podcast, uh, what I would suggest is instead of thinking of all of your meals to sit and try to change overnight, oh, right. focus on one meal at a time. And so if you are skipping breakfast, then my recommendation to you is one, just have the awareness that you are probably storing fat if you're skipping meals. So if you want to make sure to rebuild back your metabolism and start letting your body start burning the fat naturally, like in its sleep even, right. Mm -hmm. Then let's go ahead and just, just start focusing on that one meal, that breakfast, or maybe Maybe it's lunch you struggle with, whatever it is, but just choose one. And yeah. it could just be as simple as a protein shake. That's it. Like, just keep it simple today and just leave that just going, okay, I can do one. And then once we do that one, you know, it builds onto the others. I like a Jill, what you said there, as far as meal prepping doesn't have this have to be this whole extravaganza ordeal. And I think a lot of people end up making it be that way when meal prepping could just be as simple as making a meal, but doing extra. Like you just said, if you have a family of four make your recipe for a family of eight. And then next thing you know, look, you're a meal prepper. You just did it. Yay. Yeah. Like pat yourself on the back, like girl, you did it. And so, um, and, and also recognize that there's times that you do rush and go get something. That's okay. Let that like 80, 20 rule be what you live by be 80% great. And 20% of the time get working on being great, but be gentle to yourself. It's all about giving yourself that grace, realizing that we're all in different seasons of our life. You know, maybe when you didn't have children, it was a lot easier for you to do this. And now that you have children, embrace your season girl, like check in with yourself. You know, there's, there's times that you won't have kids and then it'll go back to being in a different season, but then you're going to miss not having your kids. Right. There's right. all these different things about being a human that we end up wanting what we don't have. So embracing our, our happiness in our present, where we're at now, now. And just, um, just sitting back and going, okay, what's that one thing I can do? That's the one thing I would take away from this. Definitely. Definitely. Cool. Well, Jill, I like before we leave, um, there was something you mentioned about frozen foods that you free stuff. And then can you tell us a little bit more about how you do that? I thought that was a really cool, simple trick that you did. Oh, yes. Yes. I had shared with you one of my tricks for um, smoothies and I love um, a banana in my smoothie. And sometimes I do half of a banana or sometimes I do whole, whole bananas. But as my bananas get a little bit um, more brown than what I like them, then I actually cut them in half and I put them into a Ziploc type bag and I actually put them into the bag and then I smash them down and make it so that they're actually flat. And I, I tie the Ziploc bag up and then I throw it in my freezer. So then what number one, it's easy to store because you can set them up straight up right in your, in your freezer. And what I do is like, I get up in the morning and I will just grab one of those out, throw it on the counter, go get ready, go get dressed, whatever. And then I come back out and it's already kind of thawed a little bit to where I can just throw it into that smoothie and be able to, you know, stir it all up and everything. And it's ready to go. Like it's so easy and I don't have to throw bananas away. And I just, I love that part of it. <laughs> I love that. I love that tip. So thank you for that, which leads me into another tip that, um, a lot of people say, well, I just don't like fruits and vegetables. Well, this is a tip that I like to give those. And it, it's kind of like your same banana thing. Um, what you can take is zucchini or cauliflower, either one of those, and you can chop them up and you can freeze them just as Jill mentioned, throw them in the freezer and you can actually add them to your smoothie. And what's interesting is zucchini and cauliflower actually take the flavor of something else. Like, so if you throw a strawberry and a banana into your your smoothie and your zucchinis in there, you actually cannot taste the zucchini at all. Now try it and challenge me on it. If you feel like you can taste the zucchini, okay, message me. And then I'll never say that again, but <laughs> I've tried it myself and it's both cauliflower and zucchini, which are super cool. You can still get the benefits, the vitamins, minerals, nutrients of that, of that vegetable, but yet not even taste it at all. So pretty interesting as far as there's all sorts of little tricks and stuff. If you continue to keep um, going down the health journey, you'll find all sorts of great little things like that along your way. Definitely. It's exciting to be able to, you know, use some of those things that you can throw into it and, and kind of disguise it and make that a part of your diet and add those, that nutrients to your diet and things. Absolutely. Well, Jill, we want to let the members here try to find locate you if they do have some more questions, or maybe they even want to have some recipes that you're, I think you're coming out with a book coming up soon, right? I am. I am. I'm working on that, which is super exciting. So it will be a seasonal cookbook. Um, it'll have meal plans in there. And that is 
I've, I've been working on this for a long time and finally making it a reality, which is super exciting and just makes me happy. <laughs> awesome. So where could they find you um, if they wanted to go check out these uh, recipe books? Yeah. So the recipes are going to be on amazon.com um, and then it's going to be called the CEO uh, Secret Diet. And so you guys can go right onto there and you guys can go onto there. Like I said, it'll be the seasonal recipes. And then if you want to follow me and become part of my group, definitely you'll get the little hip ends of knowing what's going on, tips and tricks and different things like that um, on there on Facebook. And we're under, um, I can drop the link actually in the, in the comments yep. um, on there. So I'll make it very easy for everyone and just go ahead and scroll down in the comments right now and go ahead and click on that link underneath Jill's name. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you, Jill, so much for your time today and blessing us, blessing us with some simple tips. And I think that's really what we need for us being so busy, whether it's business, children, just life, right? Life in general. And so this was um, really a, a great earful to hear today. And hopefully someone can take something away from this and improve their life. Yes, definitely. Thanks guys for having me. Awesome. See you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Awesome. Wrapping up, we hope that this left you with some valuable information that you can help with improving your mind, your body, and your life. Really, we're about helping you step into your best self, and that's why we do these weekly, so that we can hear from you and how it resonated. So go ahead and write us a review, and we will pick weekly giveaways on our unique booty bands to give away. So thank you guys so much for listening. It was awesome having you on. I'm very excited to leave your review. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you can get notified on any future podcasts that come out. And of course, join the community and join the app called Booty Bands and Barbells, well, you'll find us in the workouts, the meal plan, and of course, all the fun challenges. I'll see you soon, and I'll see you in the workouts.